Good morning. Thank you for joining us for this uh, second session. We're going to talk about fun stuff now. We're going to talk about new formats, and we're going to talk with the panel about apps that are going that are going to change your workflow as TV and video producers. So I first uh, want to shortly introduce myself. My name is Guillaume Costa. I used to be a journalist for 20 years. I'm acting today as, uh, among many things, Circum's uh, networking manager, which means that the lovely part about my job is I get to see what you people are doing in terms of innovation, in terms of new formats, in terms of reorganizing and try to uh, just reach out to the others so that they could implement it easily. Uh, and uh, other than that, I'm a training and consultant, and you're going to see tomorrow, uh, just to save the, uh, the date, for the Mojo session, because uh, we had a lovely team of uh, 13 people from all around Europe that were taught uh, mobile journalism techniques uh, here in the Azores, and we're going to show something. It's this microphone that's working, so this should be, this should be all set. Okay. So I first want to spend a few moments to talk about what I've seen interesting among Circum member stations and elsewhere in the world uh, about, well, what's new and trendy, what new formats can be done. Uh, but I'm going to first start by disappointing you by telling you what is not new and uh, still trendy. Because the main focus of, of what we are here remains storytelling. Without that, there's no way you are going to reach and interest any audience. So keep doing what you want to do, keep reaching the audience with, with your stories, but think about which way you're going to do it, which platform you're going to use. Whatever platforms comes next, what matters the most is the story. Because we want to talk to these guys. And one way we used to do it was this. But we all know in this room that that doesn't work anymore. A family, sorry, that's a bit one slide further. A family before gathering before a TV and watching something for two hours doesn't happen anymore. So I'm going to start the session by telling you a story. The story about the uh, German public service televisions, ARD and ZDF. They had a great idea. They said, we want to talk to the youth. We want to uh, do something and uh, spend money to reach these new audiences. But they first wanted to do this again. And they saved money to create a new TV station. They had budgeted 45 million euros. And near last minute, they said, well, no, stop. That's not going to work. We're not going to talk to anyone with that. Instead, we're going to put this money into an experience. And they hired a bunch of youngsters, all people under 30 years of age. And they built a project called Funk. Funk is a new media. It's not a TV station. It's a collection of things online. It's a website. It's a pr products produced for different platforms, Instagram stories, Snapchat, WhatsApp status, you name it, Instagram. And uh, Funk is here to reach the 9 to 19 years old in Germany. They do new formats. That is what you get when you get their mobile web websites, which are short form videos that are designed specifically for mobile to be watched onto mobile devices. And you see fiction, you see uh, news, you see something that is aimed at the youth and that is close to their interests. That means not only news, it can be stuff about how do you ask your parents for pocket money? How do you, play the, how do you face sexual harassment on social media? How do you behave with your friends? What's OK, what's not online when you're 13 and you're a girl in Hamburg? So I'm going to show you the path they've taken. What did they start with? You know that guy? Snapchat. And they tried to do journalism with Snapchat. I'm going to show you a fresh example. There's going to be a lot of examples you're going to see during this session. And the first one's going to be about how do you tell about the Manchester attack to a bunch of 12, 13, 9 years old on Snapchat. Here's how they did it. Hallo Leute, ihr habt es vielleicht schon mitbekommen, in Manchester hat es einen mutmaßlichen Selbstmordanschlag gegeben. Mehr Infos hat nachher Helene für euch. Ariana Grande postete nach ihrem Konzert auf Twitter, ich bin am Boden zerstört. Aus tiefster Seele, es tut mir unfassbar leid. Ich habe keine Worte für das, was passiert ist. Hey Hochkant, 
Bisher hat dieser Tweet weit über eine halbe Million Retweets bekommen und fast 1,5 Millionen Herzen. Die Solidarität ist aber nicht nur auf Twitter groß. Unter dem Hashtag Room for Manchester öffneten die Bewohner Manchesters ihre Wohnungen und sagten, kommt vorbei, wir helfen euch, wir haben ein offenes Ohr, ihr könnt auch bei uns pennen. Und auch Stars zeigen ihre Solidarität mit den Betroffenen des Anschlags. Katy Perry sagt zum Beispiel, mein Herz bricht, wenn ich an die betroffenen Familien denke. Mein Herz bricht, wenn ich an Ariana denke. Mein Herz bricht, wenn ich an diese Welt denke. Und auch Justin Timberlake äußert sich auf Twitter, indem er sagt, meine Gedanken sind bei allen, die von dieser schrecklichen Tat in Manchester betroffen sind. Wir müssen uns nun lieben. Was bei dem Konzert in Manchester passiert ist, ist ohne Frage schrecklich. Trotz aller Emotionalität wollen wir aber für euch einen kühlen Kopf bewahren und sagen euch deswegen, was wir sicher wissen. Gestern Abend explodierte kurz nach dem letzten Song von Ariana ein Sprengsatz in der Manchester Arena. Um 22.33 Uhr ging dann der erste Notruf bei der Polizei ein. Bisher sind 23 Personen gestorben und über 59 weitere sind verletzt. Die Polizei sagt, dass die Bombe nicht in dem Konzertsaal explodiert ist, sondern in dem Foyer der Manchester Arena und genau das ist frei zugänglich. Die Polizei spricht klar von einem Terroranschlag. Außerdem sagt sie, dass der Täter in der Arena allein gewesen sei und dass er direkt beim Anschlag ums Leben kam. Sie richtet sich außerdem an die Bevölkerung und sagt, wir arbeiten wirklich mit Hochtouren daran, alle Details dieser Tat aufzuklären. Also bitte haltet euch mit Spekulationen um den Täter zurück. So that's how they do it. And the way they're doing this this way, you know, in Snapchat you can, uh, you can skip slides, you can skip snaps. Uh, when you've got the point, you just go further in the story. So you master, the user masters the pace at which he's told the story. And they do that alone. But it requires a fair bit of planning, because in Snapchat, you can't shoot and then edit. You go all along. You shoot your piece, you do your overlay text, you put in your story, then you make the next snap. But you have to be sure about the order you're going to do that. So as Hubert Lacroix said in the previous session, these guys are all journalists that were trained as journalists. And they do have the same quality standards as the rest of the uh, group at uh, I at the NZF had. So you can do stuff like that, which is more like reflecting on an event from what they saw online, but you can do longish stuff also. We, all, we were told, well, if you want to go in the internet in social media, you have to do like punchy 20, 30 seconds blinking, uh, whirling videos. Well, no, actually, if you want to talk in a really personal fashion to your audience, you can be allowed to be longer. So you can do long-ish stuff for social media. You can even do reporting. Funk sent two reporters to cover the uh, US elections back in November just to do Snapchats. So same format, vertical, and also a four-minute story. And I'm going to play it all because I think it's the, the, the writing is important. Now that you know that you have to plan for each shot before you do it, you have to plan about the information you're going to overlay about the text, you have a better understanding of the kind of work it requires. That's Eva Schulz from Funk. Good morning. Das ist eigentlich echt kaum vorzustellen. In den USA gibt es fast 11.000 Starbucks Filialen und über 76.000 Waffenläden. Und einen davon will ich mir heute anschauen und herausfinden, warum sind die Amis so verrückt nach Waffen? Auf dem Weg zur Shooting Range sind wir jetzt gerade an diesen Wahlkämpfern da hinten vorbeigekommen. Die stellen sich Samstagmorgens an den Straßenrand und machen Werbung für Trump. I'm voting for Trump because he's going to make America great again. He's going to bring laws to this country that we need. Thank you. Uh, Donald Trump wants to allow you to have a permit to conceal carry across state lines. Uh, that way, more good guys have guns to protect us. I own two guns. One's pink for my wife, and uh, 
We went uh, to the gun uh, range uh, two weeks ago, last time we used our guns. Einerseits geht es ihnen hier um Sicherheit. Sie wollen sich selber beschützen können vor Einbrechern, Terroristen, allem Möglichen. Aber dann ist das auch einfach ein Hobby. Man geht halt am Wochenende schießen. Go Trump! Go Trump! Go Trump! Hello, my name is Justin. I'm going to tell you a few things about uh, some firearms that we have here available in guns and rifles and try to give you some information. Okay, so this is a, a very popular firearm. This is a six hour. It actually is made in Germany. Um, make really good firearms uh, and it's a good hand. So this is probably one of the more controversial firearms. Uh, this is one of a modern sporting rifle. Uh, it's very easy to operate and very easy to shoot and comfortable to shoot as well. Wer hier in so einem Laden eine Waffe kaufen will, muss einen Background-Check vom FBI machen. Dazu füllt man ein Formular aus und macht Angaben zu Drogen, Straftaten, psychischen Krankheiten und solchen Dingen. So einen Check braucht man aber zum Beispiel nicht, wenn man eine Waffe im Internet kaufen will. Und das ist heutzutage jede fünfte in den USA. Henry Clinton will deshalb strengere Background-Checks und andere Begrenzungen einführen. Die Republikaner hingegen setzen sich für eher lockere Waffengesetze ein. Dieses Jahr hat auch die NRA, eine Waffenlobbyorganisation, TV-Spots und Anzeigen für Trump geschaltet. So as far as, you know, the sporting aspect of this and, and shooting, you know, we just put a lot of holes in paper is kind of our, our goal. And we try to put, if we're trying really hard, we try to put those holes close together. All right, so here are a couple of firearms I think you should really try out today. Uh, Heckler Co Koch, I don't want to say that right, and then an AR-15. The firearm does have a safety on it, and it's very easy because it actually has safe written on there, and then there is a, a fire control where that's when it says semi on this one. Jetzt hat Justin da vorne uns gerade bestimmt eine Stunde lang eine Sicherheitseinweisung gegeben. Und ich habe zwar keine Angst mehr, aber doch ziemlich Respekt. Jetzt schieße ich tatsächlich zum allerersten Mal in meinem Leben. Yeah, so that was very consistent too. So, let's <laughs> figure out which one is right with that. So first. Wow, das war yeah. krass. Yeah, Und ich habe irgendwie sogar verstanden, warum man das als Sport macht. Oh. In Amerika fordern viele Menschen strengere Waffengesetze. Andere sagen aber, es braucht eher noch mehr Waffen, damit man sich vor Gefahren besser schützen kann. Schulen zum Beispiel gehören zu den wenigen Orten, an denen Waffen nicht erlaubt sind. Donald Trump will das ändern, damit man sich künftig besser gegen Armokläufe wehren kann, sagt er. Ich habe jetzt auf jeden Fall eines der verrücktesten Souvenirs, die ich je von einer Reise mitgebracht habe. So, you have to... There's a little bonus picture there. Because she literally met these guys on the road as she was going to the, going to the shooting range. Uh, all of that is planned uh, during the day and it's sold as it goes. And the added value of journalism here is like you're using the same tools as the teenagers would use to tell the day about makeup, food, uh, crisis with friends, anything. But they try to tell stories about, about what, they, what they see. So who, who is this for? It's for like anything between 9 and 18, uh, 19. With a focus legally, you should be 13 to start using Facebook. But we see in Norway, for instance, and a case also doing children programming with Snapchat because every, everybody is circumventing the limitations. So you have really young audiences that do not spend any time literally before a TV screen anymore, but spend a lot of time before their phone screens and snap away and consume snaps. So I just want to uh, have you listen to uh, the way to do this, and uh, better than I explain it, it'd uh, rather be uh, Eva. If you want to reach millennials, go where they already are, and don't try to pull them into TV, or with my age group, like 14 to 19 year olds that I work for, don't try to pull them into Facebook, because that's not where they are anymore. Go where they are, Snapchat, Instagram, WhatsApp, musically. 
I think like if you're a spokesman, like if you if you want to become an influencer, or if you're a person who people are interested in, then do it on the side. Then you can see like our Snapchat stars in Germany, they always snap from the airport or when they are like in makeup and stuff, when they are bored. And that is where kids want to get to know them because that's authentic and um, but if you just if you want to convey stories rather than yourself, then don't do it on the side. Don't underestimate the effort that it takes to produce good Snapchat content. So what you want to do when you are doing these Snapchat stories is not to be focused onto the platform Snapchat, but about the way you tell the story. Because tomorrow it could be something else and it's starting to happen already. It seems, it seems like Snapchat has uh, reached the ceiling. And, but the same format is used on Instagram stories, the same format is used in uh, WhatsApp status, which are both, uh, by the way, uh, Facebook uh, companies. Uh, so that's one thing you can do. The problem with it, as a broadcaster, you can't measure the audience because the way people see that, they add you as a friend with Snapchat and there's no metrics whatsoever. Snapchat keeps them for themselves. So that's an issue, but they are fairly successful and they can measure that into the interaction they get with the audience because you can chat away, commenting your slides, sending pictures to the, the, the storyteller. And uh, what Eva told me uh, when I met her a few weeks ago is that she literally is in bed with the young, uh, but because they wake up with the phone, ch check Snapchat, and in the evening, the last thing they do is check Snapchat. So the connection you have with the audience is much more close than a TV set. Another thing you can do is, uh, so it requires planning, it requires uh, the corp journalism to be able to convey the information, uh, but there's not just Snapchat. You can repurpose stories, you can repurpose existing content, not necessarily yours, uh, into short form videos that will make an impact. And I'm gonna uh, travel to France now from Germany to talk about Br Brut, which is a, a media that doesn't really exist out of, uh, an, uh, out of uh, itself. That's the website of Brut.live, which is Brut now everywhere. That's all there is to see on the web page because they are on all these social media platforms. And that's the kind of video they do. This one from Australia, just because they found it interesting. So they repurposed existing content. And I'll call Senator Waters. Thank you very much, President. It's good to be back, and that breastfeed was perfectly timed. She's just finished. Thank you very much. That's a French way, by the way, you never really set the rules. Uh, another thing I couldn't resist to show you is the way uh, Brutes collected uh, how you pronounce the name of our new president. Emmanuel Macron. Frederick Macron. Macron Shiva Sanju. Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron is Emmanuel Macron Emmanuel Macron lancia la Macron es el nuevo presidente. So, have you noticed something about the format? No said uh, spoken narration, everything goes through text, fast-paced uh, graphics. These are made to be published on all platforms. They are square, why? Because if you hold your phone vertically, you see the video the same way than if you hold it horizontally, so you, are, you got rid of the problem, you make it square, and it goes on Facebook, it goes on Instagram, it goes on Stories, you can use the same thing. So as a production value, it's interesting because the one piece you can use on all platforms. Then there's discussion about if you should do that or not, which is another topic, because when you have the ability to tell a story as we saw with the Germans, then, well, you'd rather tell a story than do this. But 
it's, it's a good, good uh, example. Another thing that's used by CNN, for example, are precisely Instagram stories to do also reporting. So same context, reporters on the field doing TV reports and on the side of it telling also what they are covering. And again, when you get the point, you just skip. You don't have to watch it if, like on a big screen in a conference room. You just skip. So all of that is experimentation, but the challenge is to reorganize in order to allow yourselves to have these experimentations, to have the people that are willing to experiment. And what I get from my colleagues in newsrooms is that usefully, well, the 20 to 30 years old are willing to experiment because they do get the format. Even though it's Snapchat today is gonna be something else we don't yet know about, that's going to rise soon, no clue, but we're going to have to adapt much faster than for going from SD to HD, for instance. It's not that kind of transition. Another format which is like a multi-layered format uh, came, comes from uh, ITV in the UK. They had a uh, Facebook Live uh, which was broadcast on telly and on Facebook at the same time to get some interaction with the audience and stuff happened during that Facebook. So what they did, they repurposed it to do that piece. Well, we are. One of the things we've been doing, I mean, th there have been a number of changes to the disability benefit regime. And one of the things we have been doing... Perhaps surprisingly, I've got a question in from Jeremy Corbyn of Islington. He says, hello, Theresa May. As Prime Minister, you've served your elite friends by giving them tax cuts when wages have stagnated, house building, house building is at its lowest since the 1920s. There are 20,000 fewer police on our streets since 2010, and the NHS is in crisis. Do you not think the British people deserve to see he and you debate live and on television. Well, what I think is more important is actually that I and he take question directly from, uh, directly from the voters. I don't think people get much out of seeing politicians um, sort of having a go at each other. I think people want to, to hear directly. Oh, sorry for the miss up. was ITV doing the broadcast and the BBC repurposing ITV stuff, which is quite uncommon, isn't it? Uh, but they did it. So. A conference presentation wouldn't be a conference pre presentation without stats. Just one slide. The number of daily active users, a million, on the first quarter on these platforms, Snapchat, WhatsApp status, and Instagram stories. You can see that Snapchat reached a ceiling with 166 million daily active users globally, consuming snaps, producing snaps. Same thing, same formats, just for WhatsApp statuses. Not using snaps, uh, WhatsApp, that's two billion people. Uh, just doing stories and watching stories. That's 175 million and 200 million for Instagram stories that basically copied the Snapchat formats and used the right uh, user base they had to push it among them. So that kind of story setting you've seen uh, during the presentation is something happening that we can't really see if we don't pick up our phones. So it's there, it's talking to the youth. Most of these people, by the way, are under 25 years of age. So it's sort of invisible if you don't get your face onto the screen. So if you want to reach the youth, the piece of advice I can give to you, seeing what I've seen in the media business these days, is just to forget about TV. Thank you.